Now, there is an explosive new article out in Politico that reveals how the Democratic Party was rigged from the beginning. The primary, I should say, was rigged from the beginning against Senator Bernie Sanders. So this is big, big news uh, with potential ramifications for a long time to come, especially for uh, the DNC, the Democratic Party, going into the 2018 elections in 2020 and beyond. So now this article, what makes it the most amazing is because, look, us progressives, we've been talking about this. We'd be like, yeah, the DNC definitely was stacked against Bernie Sanders. Some people avoided using the word rigged. Um, some people obviously had no qualms about using it and, 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 and were convinced, yes, they rigged it against Bernie Sanders from the beginning. And now we actually have proof. Okay. And it wasn't us that found proof. It was Donna Brazil who wrote this article. Now she was the DNC, the interim DNC chairwoman. So this is somebody who was inside the establishment, who is very credible about what's going on inside the establishment, uh, because she is a member of the establishment. She's the inside track. Uh, she was a big Hillary Clinton supporter. And now it's now it's a DNC whistleblower, which is amazing. Okay. So in this article, and I'm going to break it down. She describes first a call with Bernie Sanders and details, um, basically what happened, uh, uh, like with, um, inside, this is all insider DNC information about funding, about, uh, the previous chair, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, and how Hillary Clinton had essentially ran a giant money laundering scheme to the benefit of her campaign that actually hurt state campaigns and hurt the Democratic Party overall in the 2016 election. So let me get into the details. Now, uh, she does not have good things to say about former DNC chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. In fact, in, in several parts in this article, she throws uh, Schultz under the bus, which is amazing. Um, and it's a lot of the criticisms that progressives have had against Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Tim Canova, of course, um, early on Twitter said, uh, tweeted that, hey, man, this is exactly the kind of stuff that we were saying about her during the election. This is the stuff that we noticed. We knew she wasn't a good chair. We knew she was in the tank for Hillary Clinton. Uh, but, of course, there's a lot of people that uh, push back. They're like, no, 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 no. Uh, completely fair, completely impartial. Uh, what are you talking about? Debbie Wasserman Schultz is a great chairwoman. And that's what the establishment would say. Uh, and of course, we weren't buying it. Now, anyway, she said that my predecessor, Florida Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz, had not been the most active chair in fundraising at a time when Barack Obama's neglect had left the party in significant debt. Now, not only did she throw uh, Debbie under the, under the bus, she also threw Barack Obama under the bus. That's also super amazing, okay? And look, this is something that we've said about President Obama, too, uh, you know, in its fair criticism under his leadership, since he didn't really care so much about the party, uh, the, uh, you know, and, and cared more about his own reelection campaigns, the state parties and, and uh, you know, the, the 50 state reach out strategy wasn't being enacted. It didn't work. And uh, consequently, under Barack Obama's leadership, uh, and the DNC's leadership under Deborah Wasserman Schultz, the Democrats lost over a thousand seats in state houses all over the country. So this is partly why. So this explains why they had so many losses in so many areas where they actually should have won. Okay. Now she also goes on to explain how Hillary Clinton, essentially, after President Obama, uh, you know, basically said, "Okay, DNC, you're on your own, man." I'm not going to help you anymore. Hillary Clinton pulled into the vacuum and was like, you want money? I, I can get you money, but it comes with a few strings. <laughs> uh, so she used her funding, signed a deal uh, that left her controlling the party. Now that includes taking over day-to-day -day operations, which include access to the money. Now, that's actually a very, very important piece of the puzzle, of course. Now, back on Schultz, 
She writes, Debbie was not a good manager. She hadn't been very interested in controlling the party. She let Clinton's headquarters in Brooklyn do as it desired, so she didn't have to inform the party officers how bad the situation actually was. So again, here's the DNC not being very transparent. Wow, uh, color me shocked. <laughs> now, uh, she said, the Saturday morning after the convention in July, I called Gary Gensler, the chief financial officer in Hillary's campaign. He wasted no words. He told me the Democratic Party was broke and $2 million in debt. What? I am an officer of the party, and they've been telling us everything is fine, and they were raising money with no problems. Gary said that was not true. Officials from Hillary's campaign had taken a look at the DNC's books. Obama had left the party $24 million in debt, $15 million in bank debt, and more than $8 million owed to vendors after the 2012 campaign and had been paying it off very, very slowly. Obama's campaign was not scheduled to pay it off until 2016. Hillary for America, which is her campaign, and the Hillary Victory Fund, its joint fundraising vehicle with the DNC, had ended up taking care of 80% of the, the remaining debt in 2016, which is about $10 million, and decided that they would place the party into an allowance. Well, that's interesting. So here's what we're going to do, DNC. Uh, we're just going to give you small amounts of money, just enough to cover your bills. So you can't do anything else. And in return, I get to control the party. Sounds great, doesn't it? Well, it sounded great to Hillary Clinton. Now, Brazil writes, if I didn't know about this, I assumed uh, that none of the other officers knew about it either. That was just Debbie's way. In my experience, she didn't come to the officers, or I'm sorry, offices to, of the DNC for advice and counsel. Uh, she seemed to make decisions on her own and let us know at the last minute what she had decided and that she had done when she told us about uh, the hacking only minutes before the Washington Post broke the news. On the phone, Gary told me that the DNC had needed a $2 million loan, which the campaign had arranged. Now, the thing is, is that the party, she says, cannot take out a loan without the agreement with all, of all the officers. Well, they didn't. Again, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is like, screw that. Screw democracy inside the Democratic Party. No, no, no. I I'm just going to go and I'm just going to take Hillary's money and let her control the party. If you didn't get it by now, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is for Hillary Clinton. And she was always for Hillary Clinton. She was put in there to uh, basically coronate Hillary Clinton. This is the coronation, okay? Now, let me, let me uh, explain a little bit more about uh, the joint fundraising uh, agreement because that actually has a very important part to play in the story. Now, uh, Brazil writes, he described the party as fully under the control of the Hillary campaign, which seemed to confirm the suspicions of the Bernie camp. The campaign had the DNC on life support, giving it money every month to meet its basic expenses while the campaign was using the party as a fundraising clearinghouse. Individuals who had maxed out on their $2,700 contribution limit to the campaign could write an additional check for $353,400 to the Hillary Victory Fund. Uh, that figure represented $10,000 to each of the 32 states' parties who were part of the Victory Fund agreement. $32,000 and $33,400 to the DNC. The money would be deposited in the states first and then transferred to the DNC shortly after that. Money in the battleground states, she says, usually stayed in that state, but all other states funneled that money directly to the DNC, which quickly transferred the money to Brooklyn. Uh, that right there, that is money laundering. That is a money laundering scheme. You're taking it from the states and going, hey, uh, uh, what is a non-battleground? Arkansas, you don't need that money. Arkansas Democratic Party? Pfft. No, we're not going to be competitive there. Go ahead and send your money to Hillary. We're, we're you know, go through and, and send it to the DNC. And then the DNC is going to be like, here you go, Hillary Clinton. Here's your money. Definite money laundering. So this went right into the coffers of the Clinton campaign. Now, back to Gary Gensler. Now he says, quote, that was the deal Robbie stuck with Debbie. Uh, he, he, he explained referring to the campaign manager, Robbie Mook. It was to sustain the DNC. We sent the party nearly $20 million from September into the convention and more to prepare for the general election. Now, this part is what really sticks out for me. 
is how they actually spent a lot of that money. Now, uh, Brazil apparently asked, what's the burn rate, Gary? Now, that, of course, refers to how much money they're spending. How much money do we need every month to fund the party? She said, he said the burn rate was three and a half to four million dollars a month. Now, that is a great deal of money. So what was it going to? Well, Brazil explained that between campaigns, the, you know, the, the Democratic and, and Republican national committees, they usually reduce their spending considerably. However, as Brazil says, Wasserman Schultz had not done that. But instead, she, quote, stuck lots of consultants on the DNC payroll. And Obama's consultants were being financed by the DNC as well. Ah, that's where all that money went. Straight into the pockets of the political consultants. Well, a lot of good that did, by the way. Those, those consultants, boy, they really nailed it, uh, didn't they? But see, here's the thing about that. The consultants win even if you lose. They get paid no matter what. And so here's Debbie saying, all my uh, political consultant friends, go ahead. Uh, and stay here, we're going to pay you handsome sums of money. Obama's consultants, too, will keep you on as well. Here's all that money. Three and a half to four million per month. What do they get for it? Nothing. So what we have here is a obviously a massive mismanagement of money. With Wasserman Schultz giving the Clinton campaign essentially control over the DNC completely. And that, of course, was the entire point of putting Debbie Wasserman Schultz in charge of the DNC in the first place to coronate Hillary Clinton. And of course, how they did that is through that uh, joint fundraising agreement. Now, the details here in that were absolutely amazing. Brazil writes the agreement signed by Amy Dacey, former CEO of the DNC, and Robbie Mook with a copy to Mark Elias specified that in exchange for raising money and investing in the DNC, Hillary would control the party's finances, strategy, and all the money raised. The campaign, her campaign had the right of refusal of who would be the party's communications director, and it would make final decisions on all the other staff. So this is a complete takeover of the DNC, complete control. Not only that, but the DNC was also required to consult with the campaign about all other staffing, budgeting, data analytics, and mailings. She says, I had been wondering why, why it was that I couldn't write a press release without passing it by Brooklyn. Well, here was her answer. So again, that is an unprecedented level control of the party. And of course, it backs everything that we've been saying since the primary, that the DNC was in the tank for Hillary Clinton. That's because the DNC was part of Hillary Clinton's campaign the whole time. And the timing, by the way, is very interesting because it's not as if that they did this after the election, which would actually be normal. Okay, the DNC then becomes pretty much you know, tied to the campaign after the nominee is chosen, and then they go on together to win the election. That's not what happened here. This actually happened before the election. And before the primary was even over, they decided on day one, Hillary Clinton, she's going to be our nominee. That means uh, Bernie Sanders, Martin O'Malley, Lincoln Chafee, get out of here. You have no chance. This is the party of our beloved Hillary Clinton. This is a coronation. The entire primary process that we went through is little more than a formality. That's why Hillary Clinton was so annoyed at Bernie Sanders throughout the entire campaign. What do I do to make this guy go away? This is supposed to be my turn. This is supposed to be my time. This was supposed to be my coronation. Uh, I'm supposed to be unopposed. And we got this, this socialist upstart from Vermont coming in and challenging the great Hillary Clinton. We've got to get him out of here. And that's why they had all the dirty tricks. That's why they had the smears. That's why Hillary Clinton, to this day, still blames Bernie Sanders and hates Bernie Sanders. He got in the way of the nomination that she paid for. 
bought and paid for. This is the definition of rigged. This was preordained, her winning. Now, as Donna explains, this is not normal. This is not how it should work. She says that when you have an open contest without an incumbent in competitive primaries, the party comes under the candidate's control only after the nominee is certain. This victory fund agreement, however, had been signed in August of 2015, just four months after Hillary announced her candidacy and nearly a year before she had officially won the nomination. Brazil adds that if the fight had been fair, which it was not, one campaign would not have control of the party before the voters had decided which one they wanted to lead. She said this was not criminal, but it compromised the party's integrity. You goddamn right it did. Absolutely. Again, we knew it all along. Everything that we said is absolutely 100% true. All the Hillary supporters that scoffed at us, who said, no, no, you're just crazy. Uh, you just can't accept the fact that Bernie Sanders got less votes than Hillary Clinton. And that's why he lost. It, no, the DNC had nothing to do with it. All the officials from the establishment that came out and said, no, 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 uh, the, not rigged, not at all. No, of course, this was completely fair and impartial. All the articles from different media outlets calling us crazy Bernie Brisk, uh, saying that we can't let go, that the primary process was completely fair. What now? What now? You were wrong. You were wrong, and you need to admit it. We need to have a bunch of articles out there explicitly apologizing for the way that Bernie Sanders and his supporters were treated throughout the primary campaign. Those of us who suspected, hey, you know what? Something does not seem right here. Something's a little off. I think you're in the tank for Hillary Clinton. We knew it. We knew it. We were right and you were wrong. Now own up to it. Own up to it. And for her part, Donna Brazile actually has. And I give her credit for that. Okay. And again, this is somebody who had also favored Hillary Clinton. She was not a raging Bernie bro. She was fired from CNN for passing along questions to the Hillary Clinton campaign. She was biased towards Hillary Clinton. And even she could not ignore the shenanigans inside the DNC. The blatant favoritism. Even though she played into it. I gotta give her some credit for this. Because she just came out against the entire DNC establishment. In a big, big way. A lot of people don't realize. Those who do still criticize her. And even I still criticize her for what she had done. But now, you don't realize how much this is actually going to hurt her politically. All the bridges, burned, gone. So she's, again, <laughs> this is going to uh, definitely hurt and impact her career going forward, especially inside the DNC. So, you know, there's, there's a little bit of credit, I think, that she, she does uh, deserve. So... We do remember, though, and we will not forget the way that she screwed over and aided in screwing over Bernie Sanders, that she was part of it as well. So, to be fair. Now, speaking of Bernie Sanders, by the way, and this is probably the thing that it really bothers me and it impacts me the, both, uh, the most. Okay. Now, she writes, I told Bernie I had found out Hillary's joint fundraising agreement. I explained that the cancer was that she had exerted this control of the party long before she became its nominee. Had I known this, I never would have accepted the interim chair position. But here we were, with only weeks before the election. Um, yeah, here, here, uh, here we were uh, with only weeks before the election. Okay. Now, here's Bernie's response. Uh, she says, Bernie took this stoically. He did not yell or express outrage. Instead... He asked me what I thought Hillary's chances were. So this right here, it proves that Bernie Sanders 
is much, much better of a person than even I realized. And I knew he was already a good person. This guy's like, I ain't even mad. You know why? Because my number one priority is to defeat Donald Trump. <laughs> he was still more concerned about the country than his personal feelings of being screwed over by the Democratic Party. That is amazing. Bless this man's heart. All right. There is not a lot of people, I think, that would have taken that well. I certainly would not have taken it that well. <laughs> so, but that's Bernie Sanders for you. It's country first. It's people first. And him second. And all those smears against Bernie Sanders. You know, right, uh, not right-wingers, but, you know, Hillary Clinton supporters. A lot of them uh, on Twitter, you know, the, the hate percent. They're like, oh, Bernie Sanders, Messiah complex. Why has he always got to put himself before the country? Why couldn't he do the right thing and, and drop out of the primary? And why, is, why doesn't he do the right thing and, and, and just fall in line and support the Democratic Party, support the DNC? Fall in line, Bernie, fall in line. All those criticisms shattered. He wanted to put the country first over himself. That's amazing. Amazing. Now, again, this information, and I keep repeating myself, I know, but we, we knew this. This was not a surprise. But what was surprise is, is where it came from, who it came from. And I don't know why she's coming out and admitting it now. I don't know her motivations. I mean, that's for her to explain. She can explain why. But nonetheless, as I said, it's not easy to go against the Clintons. It's not easy to go against the DNC. It's not easy to fight against the establishment. Now, maybe she just wants to clear her conscience. I don't know. Maybe she wants to push back on people criticizing her for her new role in the DNC. I certainly have. Uh, I don't know. However, I am glad that somebody has come forward and admitted that, yes, the primary was in fact rigged in favor of a weaker candidate who purchased the nomination. Now, had it not been, and I, and I can't say for certain, but it's possible that had they not done this, Bernie Sanders could have been the nominee and went on, as poll after poll have shown, to go on to crush Trump. And we would not be in this situation. So you can blame the machinations of the DNC. Uh, you can blame the machinations of the, of the Clinton campaign and, and, and their power and how much undue power that they hold inside Democratic politics. You can blame the money in politics. That certainly has a huge, huge thing to do with it uh, for this current situation that we have now. What you cannot blame is Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders voters, and progressives because these are the people we are the people that have always been trying to do the right thing because it's obvious now that hillary clinton and the democratic party have never aspired to do the right thing they've always aspired to serve the people in power hey everybody thanks for watching this video if you want to see more like this please hit the subscribe button below and if you want to support truly independent progressive media please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.